Hey everyone, thanks for joining. Of course, back with Randall. We're gonna go over some location-based services today. Uh, you know, talk about the fun uh, that's happening there. But first things first, Randall, how are you? I'm doing well, doing well. You know, I'm always in a good mood when I'm talking to you, Jason. <laughs> I, I wish you fire I had me up. energy. You know, it's like it's <laughs> you do have my energy. Week after hey, week. iron sharpens iron. You know, we get together. And, you know, even though what's gonna happen, we're gonna we're gonna create magic. Oh, awesome, awesome. Well, here, I mean, like, let's hop into it before we gas each other up too much. Uh, location <laughs> services, uh, you know, got a bunch of questions. Would love if maybe you wanted the intro, kind of what you guys are offering, and then we'll go through uh, some examples, what you're seeing in the space, and go from there. Yeah, so, so, so this is key. And so if somebody asks us, you know, what's your competitive advantage? I mean, obviously, we're going to have the normal one, you know, world-class team, over a decade of experience, you know, much more uh, of a deep bench when it comes to, you know, our engineering prowess, engineering resources to do a lot of things. So we can build mobile applications faster and more feature rich than just about anybody else. But a lot of people, I think, will say that. And a lot of entrepreneurs are biased to their own team and their own ability to efficiently create value. Got it. Competitive advantage, though, you know, and I'll put us up against anybody, is our location-based services, as you said, you know, a lot of you'll hear it, you know, just the acronym LBS. Um, and quite frankly, I hate that services is in that acronym. I don't know who created that, uh, but it's really location-based software. I mean, that's LBS to me. So we have developed industry-leading, Gartner-recognized, multiple awards for it, proprietary software that allows us to identify and locate a mobile device both outdoors and indoors. So everybody's kind of familiar with GPS. You know, you're walking around, you know, and, or, or you're driving somewhere in like a, a rideshare app or you're using, you know, Waze. GPS doesn't function the way you think it does as a consumer. GPS is not that, you know, not that accurate, let's say. So I spent over a decade in the Army GPS is bouncing around like 10 meters at a time, like all over the place. Like it's not that good. And so what ends up happening is companies like, you know, Google and, and with Waze or, you know, Lyft, what they have to do is use a lot of algorithms and a lot of kind of machine learning, if you will, to take that signal, quiet down all the noise and make sense of what's happening so you can use it as a consumer. And so when that car is driving down the street, that's not GPS, that's software making it driving smoothly down the street, taking turns, getting where you need to go. So that's fine. That's outdoors. That's GPS. But what happens when you go inside a building? What, what, what controls that? GPS doesn't work anymore. So this concept of location-based services is really what gives rise to the more meta theme that we've talked about in the past, digital transformation. It's how do I take advantage of other, what we call access points? So those, you know, you walk through and you see the boxes like for, you know, your Wi-Fi or you'll see little beacons on the wall. Those are a lot of times like, you know, Bluetooth. Um, and there's a lot of other technologies that you can use. And not all of them have location as their primary use case. So if I'm Cisco, who's a major investor um, in one of our private rounds before we went public, and I'm installing Wi-Fi in a large corporate office building, all I'm trying to do is make sure you can get on the internet. And so I'm not really thinking about all of these locations. I'm just thinking about getting you on the internet. So now if I try to use that signal to identify a mobile device and direct you around a building and you know, to a certain conference room for a meeting or try to say, hey, Randall, you know, here's Jason and connect the two of you, or if you're in a ICU bed and you're trying to find your doctor on the floor and see where they are, those access points were never designed to do that. So you need software to make sense of what's going on and to find those mobile devices in time and space. And that's where location-based services comes into play. That's what we do very well. So we create that same blue dot experience that you're comfortable and familiar with outdoors. Yes. We create that both outdoors and indoors. So you can literally seamlessly walk outdoors, indoors, and it's just like, you know, it, it's just magic. It just seamlessly transitions into an indoor environment, and we can identify where you are. And now that's a big difference, what we do, and I call it, you know, high-precision indoor positioning, 
versus what a lot of companies pretend to do. And you usually can kind of, you know, find them because they'll call it wayfinding. And wayfinding is, I can hack that. So it's just like if I'm a, you know, two Freds in a shed and I'm trying to convince you that I'm this bigger company than I am, I'll go hire some graphic design artist and create this really big pitch deck and this really great website. And you'll be like, man, those guys are hot. Like, they, look, they look good. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's just two Freds in a shed that, you know, not really a company. You see a lot of this in blockchain. You know, people try to pretend like they're more than they really are. So wayfinding is I'm here and I'm just looking to go to the back. I can calculate that route and draw a line on a map to get you there. And it feels kind of like location-based services. It kind of feels cool. Like, oh, I can I have directions on my phone. That's not what we're talking about here. When you're trying to enable what we've been looking at in Hollywood, when you're trying to enable like personalized advertising and all this contextual engagement, you need real-time positioning. And so that real-time positioning means I can have my mobile device sitting in a chair at a conference room talking to you. And if I get up and move around and sit next to you, that blue dot follows me. Sub one meter accuracy, seamless blue dot, as if it's literally just watching me as I go. Once you can do that, now just think about all of the use cases. You know, you could have a a, a console in a casino and literally be like looking at devices here and there and like, you know, click on, a, you know, a device and say, you know, go give that person a drink. You know, they've been here 60 minutes or you could have that autonomously triggered. You could say, you know, this person, you know, is, is actually one of our whales. Looks like they're, you know, click, send one of your, you know, floor managers over there to interdict their bad journey and take them over to the bar, get them, or get them, you know, to go take a show, get them away from the table because you don't want them to lose too much because they'll never come back. There's all of this contextual engagement that gets turned on once you can have that seamless indoor positioning and it's tied to an identity, you know, because I always like to say you can't manage what you can't engage, you can't engage what you can't locate, and you can't locate what you can't identify. So our location-based services, which is really location-based software, identifies, locates, engages, and manages mobile devices in real time when a venue becomes a smart venue and it's no longer a dumb experience. And that, in essence, is digital transformation. You need location-based software in order to drive digital transformation. Yeah. Well, look, uh, incredible intro. Uh, you know, thanks. Uh, you know, thanks for that. It's funny you talk about GPS and obviously what you guys have and the issues and some of the others when everyone just thinks, oh, GPS is GPS. So uh, thanks for that. That was pretty interesting. Um, two questions for you. One, uh, the first one, and then we'll do the second. The first one's going to be, you know, kind of, can you give me an example of where Funware has been used or where you guys have deployed this? And then the secondly is kind of, what are you seeing in kind of the location-based services or software really um, kind of industry, of course, you know, as we move, you know, post COVID, but curious for the first one, um, if you want to talk about kind of an example of where Funware's, you know, being used now or where you guys have deployed. This yeah. Software. So it's always going to, right now, you know, this is transformational. So invest, you know, people getting in on investing in Funware now, in my mind, I believe it's like, in on investing in Amazon below $100 for 10 years. You know, literally you had so much time to accumulate Amazon shares while they were building the infrastructure required for an on-demand economy. We're building the infrastructure required for digital transformation to enable a contextual mobile engagement economy where every single mobile device needs to be contextual. And so where you see that often is where there's a very complicated journey where you really need to take a consumer with a mobile device and give them more option to de-conflict an inherently inefficient journey. So hospitals, huge. You know, people get to hospitals, campuses, don't know where to park, don't know where their appointments are. It's a $150 billion a year problem in the U.S. alone, people missing their appointment or just being late to their appointment. And so our software allows just an easy fix right out of the box for that but also giving people the right information while they're on property, actually before, during, and after they leave, all, you know, whether you need your discharge protocol, certain surveys, certain information from a content management standpoint about your procedures. So now I sit down, I'm waiting in the waiting room rather than just sitting there. 
I send actually a lot of notes and information and videos to watch about your procedure while you're waiting. You know, a lot of this can be contextual. Maybe I show up and I know that that person needs a wheelchair waiting for them, or they need crutches waiting for them, or maybe they have, you know, limited visibility and they need a guide to help them get to where they need to go because they don't have anybody showing up, you know, on their behalf. They're just getting dropped off by a service. So there's a lot of information to make that user journey enriched and better. And so we want to provide that at a time and place when it's valuable to the user and valuable to the organization as well. So hospitals are huge. Smart workplace solution is huge for us right now. So everybody's trying to figure out how to get back into the office in a post COVID-19 world. They're thinking about like what's called hoteling. So you, maybe you don't have dedicated personal office space. You just kind of rent office space, almost like your very own WeWork. A lot of companies are thinking about going to that where you show up, you know, you park and our, our mobile device triggers your parking management system. You walk in, our mobile device triggers access to all the doors. You get routed directly to your office for the day or any conference rooms you need to the day. And you can send those to any visitors or you know, meetings you may have that maybe need to know the same information seamlessly. Smart cities, um, we're launching our, our first smart city with the city of Pasadena. I'm really excited about that. You know, smart cities have a great use case for this as well. Just trying to surface you know, where are people, where are things happening in a city, and then where are really interesting businesses that can also plug into that ecosystem. Um, hospitality will always be huge. So, you know, all the hotels, resorts, cruise lines, things like that, where, you know, you could basically buy, you know, buy food and beverage anywhere on your trip, and they'll just deliver it directly to you. you got to have location in order to do that. And then residential, you know, we have a large uh, kind of residential business where you think high-rise, luxury buildings, you want to use your phone to be able to access elevators. You know, think about how cool it would be is as you leave your you know, condo and, you know, right when you leave the door, it triggers the elevator to come to your floor because it knows you're about to go to the elevator. So now instead of having to click that button and wait for you, the elevator is already waiting for you when you get there. And it can automatically trigger, you know, ballet, you know, retrieval for your car. You can do a lot of different other things, you know, amenity booking, things like that. So, a lot of where you have those complex customer journeys, that's where you see us. And we've announced a lot of these more recently. So Norfolk Southern for Smart Workplace Solution, uh, Society Los Alos in Florida, it's the largest mixed use uh, development um, in, in the U.S. You know, we just launched there. Uh, we work with the Win in Vegas and Boston, you know, Cedar sinai Dignity Health. Um, you know, the, the list goes on, you know, Dignity Health, now Common Spirit um, Health System. We cover over 22 million square feet medical facility space. And so really, as you think about what we want to do, and this is, you know, the second part of your question, I want to bundle our software inside of every possible channel partner relationship we can so that it's ready to go. Think about Microsoft. Microsoft would have never become Microsoft if they didn't get Microsoft in the virtually every computer and every phone as they were built. It was already bundled. It was there. And so when I talk about indirect channel, Imagine that now. Imagine what that does to our stock. You know, when we start having partnerships in place where technology partners who are Fortune 100 companies are rolling out technology, and I don't care if it's smart thermostat, smart lighting, Wi-Fi, you know, their mobile application, you know, portfolio, doesn't matter what it is, but if our software and our capabilities are already bundled within it, it's just mailbox money at that point. And so mark my words, when that starts happening, people I wish someone would have told me, telling you right now, that's what we're going to do. And we're going to knock it out of the park and you're going to shoot yourself for not paying attention to that guy, that, that bald headed guy that you think's a UFC fighter that said, I told you we were going to do it. <laughs> you guys were too busy focusing on what are you eating for breakfast and your meal plan. Then, I know. You know on the I'm telling you, I'm like, <laughs> everybody wishes they would have invested in Amazon for 10 years when they were below a hundred dollars. It's laughable that you're going to, you know, I guarantee you in a few years, people are going to go, you could have bought funware at $2. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? Well, awesome. Holy. Well, hey, yeah, that was a great, uh, you answered both questions kind of in the same answer there and the long winded <laughs> answer. So that was, that was awesome. And we got a, a few more minutes. Uh, if you wanted to touch on anything else, either funware related or software, location based stuff, um, anything that comes to mind? No, I would just say, you know, it, it's table stakes. I want people to understand that the world is changing. Like everybody, you know, kicks themselves for not seeing it. 
Think about right now the on-demand economy. It makes so much sense. I want stuff on demand. The only way we have an on-demand economy and how Amazon has just driven that is because they built all of the infrastructure, both virtually and in the real world, to give you on-demand shipping and on-demand cloud storage. Like they made that investment because they saw where the puck was headed. We see where the puck is headed. What you do right now with your mobile device is not what you will do with a mobile device two years from now five years from now, 10 years from now. And we probably won't even have this at some point. It'll be a hologram display popped up from a wrist bracelet or retina scans or implants. I don't know, but I mean, we've been watching it in Hollywood forever. All of that will require software-like funwares in order to communicate with technology from 5G to beacons to Wi-Fi. And all of that will be displayed through some sort of mobile application whether it's on a peripheral device, a wearable, a mobile phone, doesn't matter. Our software, we're hardware agnostic. So our software, when it begins to live in every single possible access point so that we can create smart venues, we're a Fortune 100 company. Yeah, incredible. And I, you know, you have me thinking there too. It'd be funny to do a, you know, potentially a video talking about what could come in the next 10, 20 years of tech. Uh, you know, you can talk about some of those Hollywood style things, which would be pretty interesting and kind of how we absolutely. Um, but, you know, Randall, thanks so much for joining. This was an awesome video. And I invite anyone who made it this far, uh, let us know if there's any questions, anything you want to see in some future videos, and we'll go from there. But, Randall, thanks so much. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Jason. Have a